Namaste. I'm Dr. Naresh Bana, and today we are going to talk about the first PPP project of Royal Kingdom of Bhutan. Interestingly, Bhutan is located in eastern Himalayas with two giant neighbors, China to the north and India to the south, and yet continues to have one of the highest index of human happiness. Wow. And one of the reason for that happiness is all households of the country are electrified. When we talk of electricity, we must talk of the first PPP hydropower project of Bhutan, that is Dagachu hydropower project. Dagachu hydropower project is also credited to be the first cross-border energy trade PPP project in the world. The project site is located in southwest of Bhutan in Dagana district. And in the 3D map, it is shown here at the confluence of Sankos River. The catchment area ranges from 500 meters above sea level to 4,000 meters above sea level. The background is that after the Kyoto Protocol, ADB was mandated to participate in a clean development mechanism funded power project, and they selected Bhutan to be one of the project site. Bhutan government brought in the Sustainable Hydropower Development Policy in 2008 and also established a state owned company called. Druk Green Power Corporation to oversee all the hydropower projects of the country. And Dagachu Hydropower Project Corporation was also set up in 2008. It further solicited a joint venture with Tata Power Company Limited in PPP mode to design, build, finance, and operate this project. The financing of this project was first approved at an estimated cost of US dollars. 201.50 million with a debt equity ratio of 60 40. And that was the price line of 2008. But actually, it finished with 234 million point six US dollars. And Druk Green Power Corporation, as government representative, public authority invested 49 million dollars and picked up equity of 59%. Tata Tata Project Company Limited invested 21.5 million and took 26% equity. Pension Fund of Bhutan invested 12.4 million for 15% equity. And ADB brought in two debt instruments, Ordinary Cap Resource Fund and Asian Development Fund, a total of $86.1 million. Austrian Cap Export Credit Agency brought a loan of 54.1 million and National Pension Fund of Bhutan gave a loan as well of $11.5 million, total $234.6 million. The land risk of the project was well managed and all the displaced families were suitably rehabilitated and given uh, vocations and 31 acre of land was acquired within no time. 21 kilometer road was developed, which improved the connectivity and 26,000 trees were planted. The geological risk certainly was a great challenge and at the northern headrace tunnel, the geology was found to be totally different and it delayed the project by 27 months. The construction contractor procurement also got delayed because in the initial procurement L1, the lowest one was Maitas Infra, which was Group company of Satyam, which was in 2008 mired with big financial controversy, so it had to be dropped. And instead, L2 Hindustan Construction Company was negotiated with, and they were appointed as the construction contractor. Being the first cross border energy trade project, there were policy issues with Indian government because this is the first time energy was being imported. So, Tata Power Company also took a lot of time in that. The power purchase agreement was elaborate and the base tariff was fixed at 2.4 rupees per unit and 
with the increase in construction cost at the time of completion by 16%, the tariff was also raised to rupees 2.9 per unit. But even that is becoming difficult because there is a less demand in Indian power trading sector. Uh, when the project got completed, the internal rate of return as calculated by ADB was 19.5%, which if you factor in the cross-border benefits comes to 24.8%, which is one of the highest for such medium, medium level power projects. The lessons are very important. That is a technical and commercial uncertainties associated with hydropower project can cause a lot of cost and time overruns. We have seen 27 months delay because of geological factors and ADB should have maintained and monitored the policy development and actual implementation of cross-border trade of electricity between India and neighboring countries. It is also important for power off takers to have tie-ups with the power trading exchange and hydropower companies and ADB could prove that yes, they can deploy successfully the clean development mechanism funds for real type of clean development mechanism projects. Thank you. With that, I come to the end of this case study. If you liked it, do click the like button and subscribe if you wish to and wait till I come up with the next project. Until then, namaste, have a nice day.